How do they cope, the people who don't have a large car? Strap it on the roof rack. What? And what about the ones who have to go by public transport? Do you think there are any? Oh, you'd have to book an extra seat, like musicians with cellos. Army recruits with ironing boards. <laughs> Did you check the back door? Back door, side door, bathroom window. Anything else to go in here? Oh, what's he doing? It's time we were leaving. Dan! Daniel! Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Can you do this cufflink for me, Mum? I can't seem to make it work. Oh, come here. You're not going to travel in your suit, are you? I'll have my jacket up in the uh, back window, like a travelling salesman. Well, wouldn't it make more sense just to wear jeans? Hardly. Why? No jeans allowed at Sandhurst. Uh, right, there you go. Thanks, Mum. Now, are you sure you've got everything? <laughs> yes. Toothbrush? Uh, yes. Phone charger? Yep. Boots? <laughs> have a little faith, Dad. <laughs> come on, then. Let's hit the road. <sighs> Still going to voicemail? Pat, you've got to stop Oh, this. shut up, Tony. Sorry. Uh, I'm just so afraid he's... Something's happened to him. Nothing's happened to him. You don't know that. He wants some time on his own, that's all. <laughs> he's been on his own all last week. Not really, with you and Mum knocking on his door. We were trying to help. And I really thought we were getting somewhere. He was just starting to open up and then you go and tell him... I've it's... said I'm sorry. But what did you expect me to do? Pat him on the head? There, there, Tommy. It'll be all right. No, of course not. He's a grown man and he's made an unholy mess of things. But then to go blaming it on his dead brother... That is not what he was doing. He was doing. just making excuses. I just keep imagining him lying dead in a ditch somewhere. Oh, Pat, just because he's got his phone switched off doesn't mean no. that he... Oh, it's Roy. Hello, Roy. Oh, hiya. Sorry I missed you earlier. Oh, it's OK. Thanks for calling back. I'm going to check on the cows. OK. What? Oh, nothing, Roy. Sorry. Um, you've still got Tom's door keys, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Could you possibly meet me there? Well, um, not just now. We're going out for lunch. Later on this afternoon? Um, yeah, yeah OK. Uh, about four? That's fine. I just want to have a look around, see if there's any clue as to where Tom might have gone. So, I need to head off now. Oh, but we'll see you later, won't we? Yeah, yeah, of course. But right now I have to go and meet the rest of my platoon. What about your stuff? I'll take it. Can you manage? Yeah, if you just uh, stick the ironing board under my arm. OK. Ah, thanks. Uh, they're going to show us to our quarters first so I can dump this lot. And I think you two have to go and listen to some speeches. Huh. More of a welcome chat, I think, from your CO. With coffee, if we're lucky. Oh, do you know where the Indian Army Memorial Room is, Dan? Oh, you'll love it. In there, up the stairs, big black door. We'll just follow the crowd. Yeah, there's an enormous great chandelier. You can't miss it. It's all stained glass and pictures of the Raj. So, plenty to distract us if the conversation flags. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and afterwards, you just go over to the chapel, where the commandant and the old college commander will talk to you. Ah, I've got to go. I'll see you in a bit, OK? Yes. OK. Bye, darling. Oh, keep the noise doing, will you? I know I'm a wee bit late with your breakfast, but there's no need to make quite such a fuss. Jazza! Oh, morning. Afternoon, I think you're fine. Aye, uh, so it is. Good night last night? Do I remember it? Uh, I... I don't suppose you've heard from Tom, have you? Me? Nah. Why? He's not answering his phone, and, and his mother is convinced he's thrown himself off Beachy Head or some such. Huh? And nothing I can say will persuade her otherwise. She reckons he's topped himself? Yes. Nah. Oh, Tom. He's not that daft. No. Anyway, if you do hear from him, tell him to call his mother, will you, just to put her mind at rest. He's going to come back sooner. I can't keep this up much longer. Interfering with your social life, is it? Oh, that I know, but my talents are required elsewhere. Are they? Next week. Me and Ed have got some sheep shearing lined up. Oh, oh, he'll be back by then. He knows we've only got cover arranged for the honeymoon fortnight and, and we've got the organic inspectors in next week. I, I'm sure he hasn't forgotten about that. Oh, 
Whew. I'm glad to get out of there. Yes. All those memorials to dead soldiers. Every inch of wall, every pillar. I know. And that cross with the sword on it. Oh. The Lieutenant Colonel was nice, though, wasn't he? Do you think so? Reassuringly human. Oh, they all make me feel like a scruffy schoolboy. They're so clean and upright. Hope it rubs off on Dan. I keep expecting them to bark at me. Shoulders back, man. Sit up straight. Oh, look. Is that them? Where? Over there. Yes, look, there's Dan. What are they wearing? Dan, over here. They look like a bunch of convicts. Hiya. What's with the green overalls? <laughs> Hideous, aren't they? And we have to wear these until we're issued with our uniforms. Well, when does that happen? Oh, they say we'll be kitted out by Thursday. Well, why does it take so long? Well, there's a lot of it. And the colour sergeant has to teach us, you know, how to look after it all. <laughs> how to use that iron. <laughs> how to polish our boots, buttons, how to stash it in our lockers. But there's a regulation way. There's a regulation everything. And there's a lot of us. There are two companies. My platoon's in the Somme Company. The Somme? Like in the First World War. Oh, it's a rather depressing sort of name, isn't it? The other one's called Gaza. Oh, dear. <laughs> and you've met the other members of your platoon? Yeah. Some of them are quite old. Old? Well, who've been in the army for a while, you know. Come up through the ranks. There are some overseas cadets, too. Oh, and there's a platoon of girls. <laughs> Good Lord, what is the world coming to? <laughs> ah, looks like I've got to go. Already? Well, they only let us out to say goodbye. And orders must be obeyed. <laughs> Too right. Anyway, thanks for driving me down. No, glad to have seen the place. And uh, I'll see you in five weeks. But you'll phone? You know our phones are switched off during the day. Yeah, but in the evening. Yeah, of course. Anyway, bye for now. Um, am I allowed to give you a hug? <laughs> I think that's probably permitted. Oh, bye, darling. <sighs> bye, Mum. Bye, Dad. Good luck. Hope it lives up to expectations. It will. I know it will. Bye. Bye, darling. Come on in. Oh, thanks for doing this, Roy. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's very tidy, isn't it? Yeah, we were a bit worried. Well, we spent a lot of time last week, you know, giving all the wedding presents back and generally clearing the decks. It was so kind of you to handle all that, Roy. Well, one less thing for Tom to worry about. Yeah. So what are you looking for? Oh, I don't know. Just some clue as to where he might have gone. Does he have an address book, do you know? Shouldn't think so. All his contacts are on his phone. I mean, are there any relatives he might have gone to stay with? Not really. And all his friends are local, th that I know of, anyway. What about Brenda? Brenda? Well, might he have got in touch with her? No, no way. No, I mean, I know there's a lot of gossip in the village. What sort of gossip? Oh, you know, just idle speculation that he was marrying Kirsty on the rebound because Brenda ditched him. I mean, it's rubbish, of course. Have you spoken to her? No, not since... Not, not this past week. But, I mean, you do know that she's engaged. Well, yes, yeah, but, I mean, Tom might have turned to her, you know, just as a friend. <sighs> now, we'd have heard. But it is possible, isn't it? Yeah, um, do you want me to give her a call? Oh, could you? I know I'm clutching at straws, yeah, but... Okay. Oh! What? He hasn't taken his laptop. Right. Oh, oh this is just going to voicemail. <sighs> Hi, Brent, it's Roy. Uh, bit of a long shot, this, but I don't suppose you've heard from Tom, have you? Only... No one knows where he is, and his mum's getting a bit worried, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, just give us a call, will you? Cheers, then. Bye. Bye. You don't know his password, I suppose? No, no, sorry. If I could just access his email addresses. No, it's no good. He said he wants some time alone. I know what he said. Well, he'll be back in a few days. I wish I could believe that. Do you want to stop off for a cup of tea? 
Oh, I'm not bothered. Well, I could do with one. That cup of coffee at Santa seemed a very long time ago. Okay. What are you doing? Just sending him a text. Oh, Shula. What? It's less than two hours since you saw him. So? And he won't have his phone on. So? He'll see it this evening. <sighs> You've got to let him go, Shula. Oh. And that means never speaking to him again, does it? No, of course not. Never sending him a little good luck message? Let's have a bit of music. Oh, let's hope he's got a big room. All that stuff he's got to store there. Oh, that's before he's got his proper uniform. <laughs> what? What's the matter? It's... It's just... Oh, nothing. <laughs> so who have you got, then? Well, no one yet. Hmm. We ought to know who's playing Glastonbury. Yeah, so if you want to see Dolly Parton, it's no good coming to Loxfest. What are you going for? Well, it's not down to me. We're engaging an events manager who'll book the acts. Well, there'll all be big names. Or are you going for some local talent? <laughs> well, you often to play the bagpipes. <laughs> Evening. Oh, hi, Tony. Roy, um, I, I must apologise. <laughs> what for? For Pat. Oh, that's OK. Wasting so much of your Sunday. Wow, it wasn't much help. Uh, neither am I. She's got herself into a bit of a state. But Tom? Oh, of course about Tom. Can I buy you a drink? Um, well, you can put another half in there. Mine's a pint. Oh. I don't know what to do to help. When you're ready, Jolene. You should bring her along the morrow. That'll cheer her up. What? It's Mady. Oh, she'll be there anyway, selling ice cream. Well, I wouldn't have thought Maples and Morris men were your idea of a good time, Jazza. I could take a leave of the country prancing, but how do you be at a barbecue and stacks of homemade cake? What's not you like? There's miles of it left. Well, whatever we don't use in here, we'll drape across the stalls outside. You can never have too much bunting. Oh, there. How does that look? Great. Festive enough, do you reckon? Yeah. Fallon. Fallon. Disaster has struck. Why? What's happened? I've just had a call from Ian. His sous chef has fallen off his bag and broken a finger. Oh. So not a major disaster then. Emma, having a broken finger rather impedes one's ability to cook. Uh, yeah, I suppose it does. So Ian has to go in and supervise the lunches. Uh, so he can't judge the cake bake? Well, I pleaded with him and he's agreed to come down here now and select the winners. But they're not all here yet. Well, they should be. It's very nearly half past eleven. So that's all right then. But who's going to present the prizes? I don't know. Oh. Jazza did offer to step into the breach, but obviously... I'll do it. You can't. You're a contestant. Oh, I only made some banana bread. I'll, I'll withdraw no, it. No, no, no. We shall have to find someone else. Why don't you get the May Queen to do it? Tilly, Tilly Button! Button. Oh, you're telling me that Tilly Button is the May Queen. Whose bright idea was that? <clears throat> anyway, I must go. I have yet to get to Penny Hassett to collect the spoons from Bill the Bodger. Bill the Bodger? Seriously? Handcrafted wooden spoons from local tree wood, Emma. <laughs> we thought they'd make good prizes for the cake bake. Yes. Oh, I say, doesn't this look lovely? Hi, Mum. Not bad, is it? Oh, the place is transformed. Yes, you have done a splendid job, Fallon. Where shall I put me cake? Oh, over here, Mum. Anyway, I must go. You'll be back before the events start, though, yes, won't you? Of course. Oh, 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 oh Mary. Oh, my Lord, that was close. Are you all right? No, I've nearly sent me cake flying. Oh, dear, this day has not got off to a very good start. Do you need a hand, Clary? No, I'm OK. Where shall I put it? Uh, on that table. What, just here? Yeah, that's fine. Now, oh, I need to be a bit careful lifting the tin off. <gasps> oh, Clary. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, it's a special occasion cake for May Day. I... I was trying to get, like, the swirl of the ribbons on the maple. Oh, yes, yes, I can see. Only, I don't know, it's... Well, it's not what you call a fancy cake, is it? Well, that's what makes it so beautiful. The simplicity. Oh, oh goodness. <sighs> I've been stuck here for hours. <laughs> 
Oh, oh, it's you. Is it? PC Burns. I'm so pleased to see you. Sorry, have we met? Linda Snell, Ambridge Parish Council. Ah. As you can see, I have a flat tyre and there's no phone signal. I've been up and down that road and climbed on top of that five-bar gate. Notorious dead spot, this. Well, I should have been in Ambridge an hour ago. Well, this is your lucky day. I'm just on my way there, so I can give you a lift. Oh, you are a knight in shining armour. Just let me retrieve my bag of spoons. Oh, egg and spoon races. Oh, no, no, these are hand-carved by a local bodger. Ah, that'd be Bill, would it? Oh, you know him. Ah, paths have crossed. Anyway, hop in. Oh, thanks. But I don't have a clue about 70s party food. You did that cookbook with Linda. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> but there's loads of 70s stuff in there. Black Forest Gatto, a Volavon. Oh, I guess. Oh, I've got enough on my plate with Ed and Will. But hang on, aren't they helping out with the party? Yeah, they are. I just wish they could do something special for their mum. <gasps> hey, look at Tilly Button. That is no way for a May Queen to behave. Oh, there's Linda... At last. Where have you been? I'm so sorry, Sally. I had to introduce the Morris men myself. Disaster struck yet again. Don't tell me. He arrested you as well. What? He does make a habit of that. And a very good afternoon to you too, fella. Oh, Linda, what have you done? What? I haven't done anything. I was stranded by the roadside with a flat tyre and PC Burns came to my aid. Right. Oh, glad to be of service. Now, I'd better go and uh, relieve my colleague. Oh, yeah, you're doing this beer goggles thing, aren't you? It's what? It's part of our road safety campaign. Uh, we have a driving simulator in the van, and the goggles, they distort your vision in the same way as being drunk does. So when you try to drive... You bash it's... into other cars and knock down old ladies. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not for real, Linda. It's like a big computer game. Oh. Anyway, must be off. Oh, uh, thank you so much for coming to my rescue in more ways than one. It's a pleasure, Linda. <laughs> See you later. Oh, what a nice young man. <laughs> Fallon, I must say, your store looks delightful. Thanks. I particularly like that picture frame. Oh, oh they're finished. Better go and marshal my maypole dancer. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd shift that umbrella stand. Yeah, how much did you get for it? 25 quid. That's not bad. So, with those three boxes and, and the standard lamp, I've already taken 95. Who just thought there was so much money to be made out of our bits of junk? My young team yeah. of maple dancers will be performing oh, in 15 minutes. <laughs> George is so pleased with himself. You know, it took him ages to get the hang of it. Not a natural dancer, is he? <laughs> a bit like his dad. Oh, I'm so glad that's over. Hello, Emma. Did you see George? Yeah, we were just saying. Didn't he do well? Oh, he was so nervous beforehand. <laughs> oh, you'll never guess what he's told me. What? You know when Linda turned up so late with PC Bones? Well, she had a puncture, didn't she? Well... According to George, she'd been arrested for drink driving. What? D drink driving? <laughs> Linda? It was rubbish, of course. But all the kids, all those sweet little girls and boys, dancing round the Maypole Emma. are telling everyone who'll listen that Linda was pursued round the lanes of South Borsetshire Emma. by a speeding police car. Blue lights... <coughs> oh, uh, Linda, I didn't see you there. Obviously. Sorry. It was only some silly story that the kids got hold of. And that you chose to repeat. I just thought it was quite funny. Oh. You think besmirching my reputation is amusing, do you? Nobody believes it, Linda. Of course not. Not for a moment. It's just a bit of nonsense. Is this Fallon's doing? What? No. Then who? Well, my guess would be uh, Tilly Button. Chili button. I see. Hello again. What do you want? Just wondered if you'd like to come and play with my simulator. No, thank you. Oh, no, sorry. You don't need any lessons in drunken behaviour, do you? You're never going to let me forget that one, are you? <laughs> Probably not, no. Mind if I ask you a serious question? No, officer. I'm not selling stolen goods in my stall. All these items were acquired legitimately. Who's that woman? What? The one selling ice cream. 
Oh, oh, Pat Archer from up at Bridge Farm. Why? She just said she needed to speak to me later. Right. Any idea what that might be about? I don't know. I suppose it could be about her son. He jilted his bride at the altar and now he's done a bunk. He's been gone a couple of days. Oh, that would explain it. I'll uh, make sure I catch up with her later. Do I recognise that plant stand? Possibly. Is it the same one? The one you got out of that skip? So what are you going to do me for this time? It's lovely. What? That is really clever. But you can look at a piece of old junk and see that it's potentially a thing of beauty. How much do you want for it? Uh, 30 quid. 30 quid. That's a bit steep. I'll give you 25. Done. OK, 10, 20, 25. There you go. OK, thanks. You ever thought of going into business? <laughs> Not really. Well, you've obviously got an eye for this sort of thing. Maybe. Well, then, what's stopping you? Ladies and gentlemen... Oh. In five minutes' time, we shall be awarding the prizes for the Ambridge Cake Bake. Oh, got to go. So Where are you going? You make your Duty way calls. The Thank you. Oh, well, I'm not going to win. Did you see Jill Archer's Victoria Sponge? Oh, it is beautiful, isn't it? There you are, Fallon. Well, I had to grab Jazzer to keep an eye on my stool. Everyone's been admiring the decorations. No, especially your table. What's he doing on the platform? Who? Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, Ian Craig, the judge of our average cake bake, has been called away. Huh? However, oh. he has left me with a list of the winners and I'm delighted to announce that we have a worthy replacement to present the prizes this afternoon. So please give a warm welcome to PC Harrison Burns, oh. our <laughs> neighbourhood officer. <laughs> but before we begin, before we begin, I should like to make it quite clear that contrary to uh, certain rumours which have been circulating this afternoon, P.C. Burns has never arrested me for drink driving. <laughs> or for anything else, as a matter of fact. What? <laughs> she thinks you started a rumour. Stop it, Emma. <laughs> so, now to business. Our first category is tea bread, and the winner is... Fallon Rogers. Oh, oh you're kidding. Oh. Why her banana bread? What oh, 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 is this so embarrassing? What is her problem with PC Burns? Search me. Fallon, may I present you with this lovely hand carved wooden spoon? And my congratulations. Oh, oh I say. <laughs> Do we all get a kiss if we win? <gasps> oh, look at her. She's gone bright red. <laughs> and the next category is fruit scones. And the winner is. Well done, Nick! For a blooming chocolate hedgehog. Oh, come on, Emma. It was lovely. Oh, <laughs> she didn't get a kiss. <laughs> and the award for special occasion cake goes to... Christine, I bet. Mm. Clary Grundy. <gasps> oh! Oh, oh! Oh, it's quite right, too. I was so sure Christine was going to win. Well done, Clary. Mm. And Ian... Ian has decided that Clary's delightful creation should also be awarded the prize for most creative cake. No! Oh, most creative? <laughs> Maybe he is. best in show. Go on, go and get your prize. Can I buy you a cup of tea? No, you can't. How could you take advantage like that? Like what? Kissing me in front of all those people? A peck on the cheek for a worthy winner. Well, you didn't peck any of the others, did you? PC Burns. Linda. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. You did a wonderful job, didn't he, Fallon? <sighs> well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a cup of tea. And if I'm lucky, a slice of award-winning banana bread. <laughs> Enjoy. Such a charming man. Oh, he can turn it on all right. Oh, Fallon, what have you got against him? Good-looking, lovely manners, unattached. Oh, are you setting up as the village matchmaker now, Linda? No, no, I am just saying that a good man is hard to find, Fallon. And I really don't think that PC Burns will be on the market for long. Come on, old girl. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're not a happy bunny, are you? Morning. 
Morning. Oh, I was hoping to see Pip. Oh, well, you're out of luck, I'm afraid. Well, Ian said he saw her at the May Day thing yesterday. Yeah. Well, she was here for the long weekend, but she went back to Yorkshire last night. Uh, well, in you go. Uh, that's it. Oh, dear, that looks nasty. Yeah, it does. She picked up some barbed wire. Oh. I'm going to get Alistair to have a look. Right. Anyway, what did you want Pip for? Oh, I just thought she might fancy earning a few quid. Oh, doing what? Some late night cultivation. Is this your maze? Yeah, yeah. This new bloke's cracking the whip, expecting us to work round the clock. Mm. And I'm honestly getting to the stage where I'm starting to hallucinate. <laughs> well, do you want me to help out? What, seriously? I'm not all that keen on working through the night, but I could do this evening, if that's any help. Are you, you sure you can spare the time? Do you know what, Adam? Since my mum moved back in, there seems to be a lot more hours in the day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky to get a cup of tea from mum these days. <laughs> oh, because of the kitchen fitters? Yeah, the invisible kitchen fitters. Huh? They still haven't turned up. I thought they were due last week. They've promised they'll start today. Let's just hope they do. I don't think mum could cope with another delay. <laughs> so you were stuck in a tractor cab yesterday, were you? Mm -hmm. Missed out on the May Day fun and games. So did Ian, most of it. He had an emergency at work. Oh, yeah, they had to rope in that policeman to present the prizes for the cake bake. What policeman? You know, that one who makes women go weak at the knees. Oh, don't think I've had the pleasure. <laughs> anyway, better get back. All right. Um, I've got to bring the sheep in this afternoon. We've got the shearers coming tomorrow, so if I come over about six-ish... That'd be brilliant. Dad, wasn't expecting you. Oh, I said I'd do the deliveries. I don't think your mum's safe behind the wheel. Still no better. Up half the night again. Uh, shall I put these straight in the chiller? Oh, would you mind? Annie's had to go to the dentist. Oh, couldn't she have waited till next week? No, she broke a tooth. So I'm having to mind the shop on my own. Well, anything I can help with? No, no, it's OK. She'll be back in half an hour or so. Oh. You heard anything from Kirsty? Nope. Still in Costa Rica. Well, that's perfectly possible there's no mobile reception there. Or that she's like Tom, needs time away to decide on her next move. Her next move will be to come back to work next week. At least I hope so. Oh, I just want to talk to her before she does, make sure she's not too angry with me. It's Tom she should be angry with. Yes, I know. Yeah, but... He's to blame for this debacle, no one else. I know, Dad. It's just... Look, Kirsty's my best friend. And I want to help her get through this. Uh, of course you do. Like I want to help Mum. Nothing I do or say makes a blind bit of difference. Would it help if I talk to her? Why can't that boy realise what he's doing to his mother? Yes, yes, I'm coming. Mrs Archer? Oh, you found him, haven't you? I'm sorry? M my son, I is he all right? H has he had an accident? No, 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 I I'm your neighbourhood officer. We spoke yesterday. Uh, I, I did call round after the fate, but no one was here. So, so you haven't found him? I didn't even know when we spoke yesterday that we were talking about a missing person. Oh, y yes. So how long has your son been missing? Perhaps you'd better come in. Hi, uh... Oh, hi, Alistair. I'll be with you in a minute. This one here, is it? Yeah, yeah. Just let me get this lot inside. Oh, dear, you have been in the wars, haven't you? Never mind, we'll soon have you fixed. Sorry about that. We've got the shearers coming in tomorrow. And I volunteered to help out at home farm later. Whoa, well, that's very noble of you. Yeah, so <laughs> I had to get them inside now. How's she doing? Looks worse than it is, I reckon. All fairly superficial, so I should be able to stitch her up OK. Oh, great. Do you want her in the crush? If she'll go. Yep. She's a pretty docile old thing, this one. Come on, then. Come on, old girl. You know the drill. Here you come. That's it. <sighs> So, how was Santa's? Oh, weird. Yeah. In what way? Well, it's like a sort of cross between a, a church and a borstal. Oh, dear. <laughs> really is another world, David. 
The officers were so polite and charming, but the recruits had to get straight into these identical green jumpsuits. Right. And you just knew that the minute our backs were turned, they were all going to be made to do 50 press-ups and a 10-mile run. Ooh. But I, mean, I suppose Dan knows what he's letting himself in for. Oh, yeah. He's completely up for it. Just couldn't wait to get going. Mm. <laughs> all right, old girl. There we are. We'll just give the anaesthetic a minute or two to kick in. OK. So have you heard from him? No, not since Sunday. Hardly surprising. They have to have their mobiles off for most of the time. Mm. But that doesn't stop Shula texting him and checking her phone every five minutes. Oh, dear. Yeah. It is a bit worrying. I mean, I still can't figure out why Dan wanted to do this. It did come a bit out of left field, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. But let's face it, whatever he does with the rest of his life, I suppose the army will give him a, a good grounding in hard work and discipline. Yep. But Shula doesn't see it that way, is it? Uh, she's terrifically proud of him, of course. With good reason. But she's not happy about it, that's for sure. Anyway, let's get this cow stitch back together, shall we? So, this note and the text, that was the last time you'd heard from Tom. I've tried calling him, but his phone's off all the time. And as far as you know, he's not been in touch with any of the members of the family? No. What about friends? Or his fiancée? Well, I don't think you can call her that anymore. Not after what happened. It sounds as if it's been a traumatic time for you all. I just wish I could... I just need to know where he is. You've contacted all his friends? The ones I know of. What about Facebook? What about it? If you post a request on Facebook, and, and does he use Twitter? Yes, all the time. Well, it might be useful to... What's happened? Have they found No, him? no. So what are the This is doing? PC Burns. I'm your neighbourhood officer. Mrs Archer approached me at the fete yesterday. So there's no news? No. Oh, I saw the police car in the yard and I really thought... Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to cause alarm. No, 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 not at all. I'll file a missing persons report and... I've got your number here, so I'll be in touch very soon. Thank you. Thanks. And your suggestion about Facebook and Twitter, I, I really haven't thought about that. Facebook and Twitter? Yeah, to find out where Tom is. Well, somebody out there's bound to know, and if we post a request... Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Do you want to bring his business crashing down on top of everything else? What? Because that's what'll happen if you advertise the fact that he's gone missing... Why would it do that? Because everyone will think the business is going under and cancel their orders, demand payment on outstanding invoices. Think about it, Pat. I do understand that there may be commercial concerns, As far but... as his suppliers and his customers are concerned, Tom is on honeymoon. I've already had an inquiry come in about the ready meals, and that's what I told them, that he'll be back from honeymoon next weekend. But suppose he isn't? He will be. No question. Evening. Oh, am I glad to see you. Got some coffee here. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I meant to make myself a flask before I started this afternoon, but I couldn't discover where Mum had hidden the coffee. Huh. She'd taken herself off into Borchester to get away from Brian, I think. Oh, huh? why? Oh, he's in a foul mood because of his sciatica. And the kitchen fitters didn't show up again. Oh, dear. Yep. Poor Mum's getting ever so slightly hysterical. Oh, there you go. Oh, wonderful. Thanks. So, um, you won't be doing Open Farm Sunday this year? Oh, extremely unlikely, I'd have thought. When is it? Um, it's the 8th of June. Mm, you'll be doing it, though, will you? Well, year of the family farm and all that. Oh, yes, of course. We're just hoping Pip can get the weekend off. She's so good at that sort of thing. Mm, 8th of June... Well, I suppose things might have calmed down by then. At least the maize will all be in the ground. You've done pretty well with the cultivation. Yeah, yeah we're getting there. Should have it finished tomorrow, if I can stay awake. Mm. Do you want me to do another stint? Tomorrow? Yeah, I could do the evening again. Seriously? Adam, I don't get to do much field work these days. I rather enjoy it. Especially in your big tractor. 
Well, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh, by the way, do you know anything about this new road? Only what was in the Echo. Mm. You haven't heard anything else? Well, there have been rumours around since, you know, I don't know, the past year, but when are they not? I looked on the council website, but there's nothing there. Oh, I shouldn't worry about it. The Echo must have been short of news last week. Yeah, except I did phone them. Really? Yeah, and they insisted that the story was kosher. Do you think Brian knows anything? I haven't a clue. You'll have to ask him. All I'm saying is, you can't blame Dad. I know, Helen, I know. I overreacted. I, I just thought if I could get the two of them to talk... Huh, I should have realised... Anyway, water under the bridge. Yeah, and Tom will be back by the weekend. Oh, so everyone keeps saying. I just can't... Oh, Helen, you'll understand when Henry's a bit older. When your children go off the radar, you always imagine the worst. If he'd only let me know, he's all right. I know, Mum. I feel a bit the same about Kirsty. keep texting her. But she's in Costa Rica, isn't she? Yeah. Just whip it. Pat! Helen! Fantastic news! Oh, tell them, Alistair. Uh, that cow that died. It wasn't TB. Oh! Oh, oh that is good oh. news. I only just got the message. I had to come straight round and tell so you. So, if not TB, what did it die of? Uh, exact cause of death can't be established. So, just bad luck? Well, <laughs> since the rest of the herd is perfectly just healthy. Just one of those things. So, the movement restrictions... Will be lifted forthwith. Oh. Animal health will be in touch. Oh, such a relief. Isn't it? And I have been totally vindicated. Vindicated? Well, you remember how Tom laid into me, blamed me for bringing disease onto the farm, as if I didn't know what I was doing buying those cows? I'm sure he didn't say that, Well, Dad. when he comes back, I shall take considerable pleasure in telling him just how wrong he was. If he comes back, Tony. We just don't know, do we? What about the licence? Is that sorted out? Uh, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. You sure? A formality. Believe me. It's all in hand. So we can definitely go ahead and start booking the bands? Yep. Which is why I've been talking to these events managers. And? The one I think we should go for is a guy called Marcus Marshall. It's Marshall C. Events. Marshall C? Yeah. As in the prison? What? Dickens. It's Little Dorrit, isn't it? <laughs> no idea. And he thought it was rather tempting fate to name your company after a debtor's prison. Oh, I think it's just a play on his name. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and I liked him, this Marcus. Well, he was really enthusiastic about the project, whereas some of the bigger companies, well, they're either committed elsewhere or... Well, I, I sort of got the impression they thought Loxfest was a bit beneath them. Really? Well, in that we're the new kid on the block and it's going to be a relatively small event. Small? Compared to some of the established festivals. Oh, it feels utterly vast to me. I'm honestly a bit daunted by the sheer scale of what we're taking on. Oh, um, do you mind if I... Uh... No, no, no. Oh. Oh. It's OK, it's nothing. I keep hoping there'll be a message from Tom. Nobody's heard anything? No. And his mum's worried sick. Oh, I bet she is. Poor Pat. Oh, anyway, um, Marcus Marshall. Uh, so you think we should go with him? Well, he's my first choice. Uh, is that OK with you? I'm in your hands, Roy. You know a lot more about music festivals than I do. I've never even been to one. Never? I didn't think they were such a big thing when I was young. <laughs> You're not that much older than me. And you were a right little raver, were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had me moments. <laughs> Anyway, um, well, Marcus reckons the priority is for us to book the headline bands for the main stage. We need to get those in place really soon so we can start advertising. Yes, time's getting on, isn't it? It's not that long till August bank holiday. Yeah, and then we can take a bit of time filling in the support acts. Oh, one thing I thought. How about we have a stage for local bands? Mm, that's a lovely idea. Yeah, I've heard some really good stuff at the Bull upstairs. And we should support local talent. Y yes, we should, shouldn't we? Hmm, I wonder. What? Oh, just a vague idea. I'll have a word with Fallon later. She's the expert.
What on earth are they doing now? Oh, it's just that little wall. They're knocking down a wall? Well, only that little bit. Well, I hope it's that... not load-bearing. Oh, you know that bit that sticks out oh. beside the fridge where the range used to be? The whole place is shaking. Huh? Solidly built, obviously. There's coffee, darling. And why do they have to have that wretched radio playing the whole time? <laughs> oh, just be grateful that they came at last. Oh. And they're making terrific progress. All the old units are out already. What have they done with them? Well, they've put them in the barn. And I told you I'm going to try and find a home for them. There must be someone in the village who can make use of them. I'm going to have to go out. I can't stand this. Come on, drink your coffee first. I mean, how long is it going to go on for? Well, not long. According to Buddy, they know... Buddy? Well, the bald one with the tattoos. He's, he's the foreman. He looks like he's escaped from a maximum security prison. Don't be such a snob, darling. Betty smokes roll-ups. He's actually very polite and well-spoken. And he assures me that the space will be completely cleared by the end of the week. The end of the week? Ready for the underfloor oh. heating to go in. And he's promised me running water and a temporary sink. Yeah, well, I'll believe that when it happens. We did fantastically well with the teas. How much did you make? Can't tell you exactly, but several hundred. And all the cakes got eaten? Pretty much. <laughs> and I have to say, a lot of the success was down to the lovely atmosphere in the hall. Oh. Fallon quite transformed the place. Oh, she did well, didn't she? Did all right with her stall and all. Sold a load of stuff. Good for her. Oh, she's really got the bit between her teeth now. <laughs> she's had a stool from our sitting room and a little shelf unit from one of the bedrooms. <laughs> and she's at them with the paint stripper and the sandpaper. Is she going to set up in business? <laughs> Not with our furniture, she ain't. <laughs> Mind you, that PC Burns ended up buying this plant stand she done. I wouldn't have minded that myself. That'll be £7.70, please, Jolene. Oh, right. It was very gallant of him to step in and present the prizes. Ah, uh, wasn't it nice that Clary won? Uh, there you go, Jill. Thank you. She was thrilled, wasn't she? <gasps> well, that reminds me, I must get a card for her birthday. Mind you, it was beautiful, her May Day cake. And you did all right too, didn't you? Oh, well. Now I'm back at Brookfield with a proper oven. And you're hosting Clary's party, I hear. Oh, thanks. We're just lending them the barn. Nick and Emma are in charge of the catering, though I have offered to help. Oh, yeah. Between ourselves. I think they're a bit phased by 70s cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've asked us to get hold of the wine. Blue Nun. Oh, Matthias Rosé. Goodness, do they still make that? Yeah, still a market for it, apparently. Some people never left the 70s. <laughs> And you're back. Yeah, there's a problem. What on earth is going on now? They're digging up the floor. Digging up the floor? For the underfloor heating. Buddy was very apologetic, but there's a, a concrete pan, apparently, and they can only break it up with a pneumatic drill. But how long's it going to take? Well, they said they'd have it finished by this evening, and I was just going over to Mum's for a couple of hours. Well, I need to use the office. Oh, Thank heavens for that. You said you weren't coming back. I know, I know, but I was going to give Adam a break on the tractor. You were what? Oh, these new painkillers are a lot more effective. Oh, Brian! And to be honest, the sciatica is a lot easier to put up with than this racket. Uh, but when I got there, everything had ground to a halt because of the problem with the big tractor. Is Adam all right? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. No, it's just one of the tyres is gone. Oh, no. So he asked me to come back here and call the tyre company. Well, they're not going to come out this late in the day. Probably not, no. Well, if it stops Adam working all night again, that's a good thing. He's only absolutely exhausted. Uh, David was going to do six till twelve this evening. Uh, Got to ring him as well, tell him not to come. If I can make myself heard above this bloody racket. So, I've called Marcus and given him the go-ahead. Hope that's OK. Mm, of course. Oh, and he loved the idea of getting some local bands in. Oh, that's good. So I'll drop by the pool this evening and have a word with Fallon. Great, Roy. Oh, and I've had another thought. Oh, you're really on a roll today, aren't you? <laughs> well, you said you'd never been to a music festival, and a sort of 
Well, sometimes I get the feeling that you're not quite on my wavelength about it. <laughs> because I have very little idea what you're talking about. So, how would you feel about going to one? One what? Music festival. Oh. Uh... Well, Greenbury Fields is happening in a few weeks' time. I've never heard of it. It's only been going a couple of years, but it's really taken off in a big way. Well, won't it be sold out by now? Probably, yeah. But I know someone who knows the organiser. And if I ask him nicely, he could get his tickets. Well... Well, it would just give you a bit of confidence in what we're doing. Can I come in? Oh, hi, Mum. I'm nearly done. Just give me five minutes. Oh, look, uh, here, have this chair, Jill. Oh, thanks, Roy. Anyway, Elizabeth, what do you say? Uh, sorry, what? Shall I see if I can get tickets? Um... What's this? Roy thinks I should go to a music festival. Yeah, so she can get more of an idea of what we're letting ourselves in for in August. Good idea. You think so? Absolutely. Sounds fun. Well, if my mum says it's the thing to do... Brilliant. <laughs> well, I'll uh, give me mate a call this evening. Um, see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. Bye, Roy. Bye-bye. Um, I've just got to get these ready for the post, Mum. All right, no hurry. Have you seen anything of Shula? Yes, yeah, she came in the shop this morning. She's finally heard from Dan. How's he getting on? Not too well, she thought. Oh, dear. It's only his first week. He's bound to find it all a bit strange. Oh, like boarding school. But he is one of the youngest in his platoon, apparently. Most of the others have university degrees. Well, they did try to persuade him, didn't they? To do his degree first, yes. But Dan was so keen to get on with it. And some of the others have come up through the ranks, so they already know the ropes. I'm sure he'll find his feet in a week or two. Of course he will. But Shula's convinced he's lonely and miserable and crying himself to sleep at night. Oh, dear. But to be honest, I'm a lot more worried about her than I am about Dan. And even when they're not drilling or hammering, they insist on having the radio playing full blast. Oh, tell them to turn it off. Well, I wouldn't dare. Well, it is your house. <laughs> the foreman looks like a mass murderer. Oh. And I'm not convinced the other two understand English, although they both appear to answer to the name of Steve. Oh, I, I thought this was supposed to be some dead posh company. <laughs> well, it's always the way, isn't it? The salesmen are all besuited and smooth-talking, but the chaps who actually do the work are the usual bunch of Neanderthals. So, you've come down here for a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> if it carries on like today, Jolene, I shall be taking up residence. <laughs> do you want water with this? Oh, just a drop. Help yourself. That's uh, 680, please, Brian, with the nuts. Evening. Oh, hiya, Roy. Evening. Oh, evening. Is uh, Fallon around? Uh, no, she's at Jack's tonight. Oh, yeah, of course she is. Do you uh, want me to pass on a message? No, 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 it's OK. Uh, I'll give her a call. I just want to pick her brain about the local music scene. That's three pounds and twenty pence. Cheers. Uh, you know we're having this music festival at Lower Loxley? I had heard, yeah. Drink? Yeah, why not? Um, pint of Shires, please. Uh, when's it happening? Uh, August bank holiday weekend. Oh, I'll put that in my diary. What, are you going to come? No, no, just to remind me to leave the county. <laughs> Well, I don't think Ambridge will be much affected, uh, but you can always get some of those noise-cancelling headphones. Noise-cancelling headphones? Now, there's an idea. How, uh, how about you, Jolene? How about me what? what are you interested in Loxfest? Oh, standing around in a field with a bunch of overexcited teenagers really doesn't appeal. No, I wasn't suggesting... There you go, Roy. No, I wasn't suggesting you, you join the audience. I thought you might do a set. Hey. Well, we're having this local talent stage, you see, and I thought... I mean, tell me if this is a daft idea, but I thought it would be brilliant if the Midnight Walkers could get back together. You're kidding me. Well, out the question. No, no, it's a fantastic idea. Pull on the rhinestone boots, my fancy new waistcoat, and let rip with some good old country music. I can't wait. Well, what about your fellow Midnight Walkers? Oh, they'll all be up for it, believe me. Apart from Danny, he's dead. August bank holiday, you say? Wow, well, we'd better get rehearsing, haven't we? Adam! Oh, hi, Mum. Hey, I thought you were out on the tractor this afternoon. No, David's come over to do another stint. Oh, well, that's kind of him. Yes, he's a star. Should be done in an hour or two. And that'll be it, thank heavens. So no more sleepless nights, then? For the time being. 
But uh, the shearers have finished, so I'm just going to take these sheep back out. Oh, I'll come with you. Oh, come with me? Yes. I could do with a breath of fresh air. Oh, building work getting to you, is it? They did say they'd finished digging up the floor yesterday. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. And Brian was on the phone this morning, trying to have a conference call when it started up again. Uh, uh. And, of course, he blames me. He's not still indoors, is he? Oh, no. No, I think he's gone down to the ball. Well, why don't you join him? Well, I have to be around to make tea for the workmen, don't I? Is that part of the contract? <laughs> well, it pays to keep on the right side of them, madam. And now they're here. I don't want them disappearing. So, are we going to move these sheep, then? OK. Come on, then, you lot. Out you come. Uh, what's happened to Adam? What? I was expecting Adam. Or the other guy, uh, Jeff. Oh, oh, sorry to disappoint. And you are? David Archer. I don't think we've met, have we? No, I just came over to lend a hand. Uh, you're a friend of Adam's? I'm a cousin, actually. Oh. And, uh, neighbour. I farm down the road, Brookfield. Right. I'm Charlie. Charlie Thomas. Oh! That's good to meet you, David. Yeah, I've heard about you. Oh, nothing too terrible, I hope. <laughs> you're the new man in charge? Uh, this side of things, yes. I thought this should have been finished yesterday. Uh, well, I think there was a problem with the tractor. Oh, was there? Yeah, I was going to come over yesterday evening, but Brian phoned to say he'd have picked up a flint in one of the tyres. Ah, oh, that would explain and it. And the new one couldn't be fitted till this morning. Right. So, have you any idea where Adam is now? Um, he'll be in the polytunnels, probably, now the soft fruit season's underway. Well, I think he's going to have to give this field another go. What? Well, the tilth is really not fine enough. It could do with another pass with a rotary cultivator. <laughs> You're only growing maize, aren't you? What do you mean, only? Well, I should have thought this was quite fine enough for maize. Um, I'm not so sure. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to meet you, David, and thanks for your help. I think Adam's finding it hard to keep on top of things at the moment, so it's, well, it's really good of you to help out. Oh, Brian, there you are. Have they gone? What? The builders. Oh, yes, yes. Is it safe for me to go inside? They've knocked off for the afternoon. And how far have they got? Uh, they'll be back first thing in the morning. Oh, Lord. But they have finished digging up the floor, so no more drilling. Oh, that's something, I suppose. Everything's still covered in dust, though, I'm afraid. But I'll clean up when I get back. Where are you going? Oh, I'm just popping over to see Pat. Do you want to come with me? Not particularly. You would at least get a proper cup of tea in a clean mug. Ryan! Oh, hello. Hello, David. Oh, hi. I was hoping I'd catch you. You don't want me for anything, do you? No, 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 only Brian. I'll see you later then, darling. OK. Uh, shall we venture indoors? See what havoc Buddy and the Steves have wrought? Buddy and the Steves? The builders. <laughs> Sound like a 1960s pop group. More like heavy metal. You would not believe the racket I've had to put up with. Hello? Oh, not him again. You've met the delightful Charlie, have you? Yeah, he collared me earlier on. Afternoon, Charlie. What can I do for you? I'm looking for Adam. I can't find him anywhere. He seems to have turned his phone off. Haven't seen him all day, I'm afraid. You've tried the polytunnels? Yeah. Nobody down there seen him either. Oh. Well, he's probably gone home for a kip. It's not even four o'clock yet. He has been working a lot of nights. He wasn't working last night, though, was he? With the tractor being out of service. Well, sorry, Charlie. Can't help you. Oh, if you do see him, tell him to give me a call. OK. Dear me. What? Well, I'm glad I don't have to work for him. Looks about 14, doesn't he? I don't know how Adam puts up with it. Uh, I'm not sure that we can actually get in through the kitchen, but let's give it a go. OK. Uh, oh, well, they have at least laid some planks to walk on. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? It looks like a bomb's hit it. Yeah. When you said they stripped the kitchen, I thought you meant they'd just taken out the units. No, no, no. They don't do things by halves, these fellas. Oh, it's right back to the brick on the ceiling joist. And what have they done to the floor? They've been at it for two days with a pneumatic drill. Oh, but you had those nice stone tiles. Yeah, they were nice, weren't they? Yeah. But they've had to go to make way for the underfloor heating. I see. Crazy, isn't it? How long before it's all back together again? Oh, don't even begin to think. 
I mean, these guys are about three weeks late turning up, so at this rate, I reckon we'll be lucky to have a working kitchen before next Christmas. <laughs> How does Jennifer feel about it? Ecstatic. Getting what she wanted, isn't she? Yeah, but if she's going to be without a working kitchen for however many weeks... Her choice. I'm already contemplating moving into Grey Gables for the duration. <laughs> anyway, oh, we do have a working kettle, if you fancy a cup of tea. Oh, OK. Right, follow me. Now, but take care where you put your feet. Honestly, Pat, I don't blame Brian one little bit for making a fuss. These last couple of days have been a, well, a nightmare. Sounds like it. Oh, and it's not just the noise. I've kept the kitchen door firmly shut, but even so, the, oh, the dust gets everywhere. Even in our bedroom, which is, well, as you know, the other side of the house, of course, there was a thick layer of dust all along the windowsill, and, and you know, sooner clear it up, then back it comes. Oh, well, I expect it'll be worth it in the end. Oh, and you know how it is with builders. Uh, yes. If you're going to keep them sweet, they need a steady supply of cups of tea, all of them with lots of sugar. And a packet of biscuits, well, it doesn't last five minutes. When did you last have this kitchen done? Oh, goodness, I can't remember. Oh, long time ago, by the look of it. Probably. 25, 30 years ago. I don't suppose you'd have a use for... My old units, would you, Pat? What? They'd go very well in here. Uh, of course, you may not have room for all of them. Right. I will say one thing for Buddy and his boys. They were very careful taking them out. Scarcely a mark on them. And they're all stacked very neatly in the barn. So, um... So, what do you think? No, thanks. Really? I'm perfectly happy with what we've got. Oh. Well, it seems a... A terrible shame to waste them. And these units are a bit dated, aren't they? To be honest, Jennifer, the state of my kitchen is not terribly high on my agenda at the moment. Oh, Pat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, how thoughtless of me wittering on like this. You still haven't heard from Tom, I take it. Oh, Lord. It's just as bad out here. What? The dust. Come on, let me give that chair away. Oh, no, don't worry. Don't worry. And it's all round the swimming pool, look. And doubtless in the swimming pool as well. Huh? Just what we needed. Um, the thing I wanted to ask you, Brian... Biscuit? Oh, no, thanks. I think Jenny's got these in for the builders. No chance of cake these do. <laughs> um, you know that article in the Echo last week? Oh, have you seen today's Echo? I had a quick look. Very nice pictures of all the Mayday shenanigans. <laughs> Mind you, Tilly Button seemed to feature in most of them. Yeah, um, there's nothing in it about the road. What road? Well, you must have seen the article last week about this proposed road between Borchester and Hollerton. Uh, oh, that. Yes, I did see it. Well, I just wondered if you knew anything about it. Well, only what was in the paper. Yeah, but you know people on the council, don't you? <laughs> I used to. <laughs> but when there was all that fuss about planning permission for the dairy unit for Barrow Farm, you were really pally with them... Um, What's his name? Thing. The, um, the chair of the committee. Oh, Kevin Townsend. Townsend, that's the chap. Well, I haven't seen him in ages. Is he still on the council? I don't know. I mean, I did phone them, but no one would tell me anything about the proposal. Well, if you ask me, the Echo just put together a story based on rumour. I mean, I can't remember a time when there hasn't been speculation about widening the bypass, building a flyover. No, no, I rang the Echo, and they were quite adamant. What did they say? That there is definitely a new road being planned and that the council will make an announcement shortly about possible routes. Right. And is it true that BL has been acquiring land? David, my days of power and influence with BL are a thing of the past. I stood down as chair a while back, as you know. Yeah, but you're still on the board. Well, yes. <laughs> and isn't it true that this... What's it called? Uh, Damara Capital. Our new masters. Are in the business of acquiring agricultural land? Yeah, because land is a good investment at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, particularly if somebody wants to build a road on it. That's pure speculation, David. But they have been buying land this side of Borchester. Yeah, because they're interested in expanding their agricultural portfolio. <sighs> Hello? Anyone home? We're out here, Adam. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? You're putting two and two together and making five. Hi, Adam. You all right? No, I am not all right. Now, what's the matter? Charlie Thomas is the matter. Arrogant. What's he done now? 
Well, since you so kindly took over the cultivation this afternoon, David, I went home for a couple of hours to try and catch up on some sleep. Mm. And I'd switched my phone off. So, what does he do? Comes round and batters on my door. Oh, it's a bit of a cheat. Yeah. Well, that's not the half of it. He woke me up to tell me that we haven't done a good enough job, that the, the field needs going over with a rotary cultivator. Yeah, he said that to me too. And he's expecting me to get straight back in that tractor and get on with it. He's got a point, though, hasn't he? What? Well, in an ideal world, you'd want a finer till for planting maize. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for your support. That's what everyone says. But you know how it is, Jennifer, when you don't know where your children are. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, I remember when Kate was a teenager... Of course. And a sleepless night she gave us. And there was that one time, do you remember, when she did actually disappear completely. None of her friends knew where she was, and we ended up reporting her missing to the police. Well, PC Burns has been very helpful. And then they got in touch and asked us to go and identify a body. What? Well, don't you remember? There was a body found at the foot of a cliff in Cornwall, the right age and the same hair colouring, and... Brian and I had to drive all the way down there, and when we got there, I, I simply couldn't face it. I was so sure it was Kate, and I simply couldn't bear to look, so oh, Brian had to go in there on his own. Oh, Jennifer, please. Oh, Pat. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to upset you, because, of course, it wasn't Kate. Yes, but it could have been. Well, she turned up a month or so later with no idea of all the fuss she'd caused... I'm sure it'll be just the same with Tom. You'll see. I used to try and do me hair like that Farrah Fawcett. Oh, Charlie's Angels. <laughs> oh, I used to love that programme. Spent hours curling and backcombing. Never really worked for me, though. Just looked like a stack. What about hot pants? Eh? Did you ever wear hot pants? I was always a big girl, Eddie. I'd have been a laughing stock. <laughs> but what about flares? Well, well, we all wore flare jeans, didn't we? So there was. Hmm. So, what did you like best about the 70s? <sighs> Weren't my favourite time. Well, it must have been so good. Well, being a teenager ain't much fun when you're a size 18. Well, what about the music? <laughs> That's what I liked about you. The songs you used to sing. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that was later, wasn't it? <laughs> 1980 when we first got together. Well, there was Mark Bolan. Oh, I was so upset when he died. Oh, yeah? And then, well, I did have a secret crush and all. Oh? Charles Aznavour. Really? That gorgeous, sexy voice. I think that's what started me off loving all things French. I remember he was giving a concert at... Oh, can't remember where it was now. But I went and queued up all night for a ticket and then I didn't get in. Oh, that's really sad. I was that disappointed. I remember crying all the way home on the bus. My one chance to see my sexy Frenchman in the flesh and I missed out. And that's your one abiding memory of the 70s? Oh, that and just... Well, you know... Being young, having knees that work properly, looking in the mirror, not seeing crow's feet and a sagging chin. You've got a lovely chin. Where did the years go, Eddie? And two dozen second class as well. Oh, please. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all, thanks. Right, that's uh, fourteen forty altogether. Oh, the price of stamps these days. <laughs> that's what everyone says. Have you heard any more from Dan? Oh, uh, yes, yes, he rang last night. Oh, how's he enjoying army life? Uh, I'm not sure enjoyment comes into it. Oh, dear. Right, there's your change. And your receipt. Thanks, Susan. Still finding it tough going, is he? Well, he sounded a bit more cheerful than he did earlier in the week. Oh, good. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I've got to dash now, Mum. I've got a lesson in ten minutes. But um, are you free this afternoon? Could be. Come round for a cup of tea. About three-ish? OK. Good. See you later, then. Bye. 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 Did 
Did you see the Echo yesterday, Jill? Yes, lovely pictures of May Day, weren't they? Yeah, but no mention of this road scheme. No, David's a bit concerned about that. You see? Well, what if it comes close to the village? Well, would that be such a bad thing? I mean, it's about time this area got a bit of investment for roads and that, instead of London getting the lot. Well, I suppose. And the bypass, oh... It's a nightmare these days. It is rather, isn't it? <sighs> Grinds to a complete halt during the rush hour. So anything that relieves the congestion has got to be good news, don't you reckon? Well, David thinks that if... Morning. Oh, morning, Eddie. Uh, just come to pick up some backy for Dad. How is Joe? Haven't seen him for a while. All busy in the garden. Oh, good. Just the one packet. Please. And how's Clary's party coming along? Oh, you know more about it than I do. <laughs> yes, Emma was singing your praises, saying what an inspiration you were about the food. Only because I was around in the 70s, which she and Nick weren't. <laughs> so, yeah, bits of cheese and pineapple on cocktail sticks. Or <laughs> stuck in half a grapefruit. I thought it was a potato. I don't think that part really matters, as long as you get the hedgehog effect. <laughs> And you're going to help Nick with the cake? She's never made a black forest gatto before, so she's a bit nervous about it. But I'm sure she'll manage. She did win Best Children's Party Cake after all. Neil was talking about shaving off the rest of his hair and coming as Kojak. <laughs> he was joking, wasn't he? Oh, I hope so. What about you, Eddie? Who are you going as? Well, I've had an idea. Not entirely sure yet that I can pull it off. But I'm working on it. Tony? Mm. What are you doing? Come and look. Well, I'm just heading back to work. This won't take a minute. What is it? What am I looking at? There. Oh! Our first Aberdeen Angus calf. Oh, I love A little bull calf by the look of things. And Mum did it all on her own out in the field? <laughs> yes. A lot less trouble than the dairy cows. <laughs> but I had that same feeling when I saw him, like, like I always used to get when the cows calved. New life. Exactly. New life at Bridge Farm. Yeah. Oh, he is mm. beautiful. And the movement restrictions are being lifted. Things are going right for us at last. Not everything. Oh, I, I, I know, I, I know, I know, I know, he'll be back. You keep saying it. But it's been a week now, Tony, and still no word. Uh, and until he comes back, or phones, or something, I can't, I, I just can't. I know, I'm... I know, love, but look. If there's one thing we know Tom cares about, it's his business. Mm. Too much, sometimes. As I recall, that was half the reason Brenda left him. I think there was more to it than that. Well... He won't want the business to suffer. And he knows we've got no cover after the weekend. He'll be back, Pat. I know he will. Wish I could believe you. Plus, we've got the organic inspectors next week. What? Well, you've forgotten. Oh, Tony. It's all right, it's all right. I've got it covered. Our side of things, anyway. But I'm not really up to speed on Tom's stuff. And he knows it. He, he's not going to leave us in the lurch. So, he'll be back. I'd put money on it. Oh, dear. What? Who did the date stamping on these? Pat did. She forgot to change the date. Oh, no, not again. Oh, well, it's only one day out. She was in a right old state this morning. Her mind really isn't on the job, is it? No. Tom's got to come back soon, though, hasn't he? You'd think. Only Ed was saying him and Jazza. Well, they got some sheep shearing lined up for next week. Yeah, they are. So Jazza can't keep on out. Oh, sorry, I'm late. That's OK. <laughs> We're fine in here, aren't we, Susan? Yeah, yeah. Tony wanted to show me that the first of his beef cattle's produced a car. Oh, lovely. Oh, isn't that nice? A bit of good news for a change. Yes. So, Clary, are you looking forward to your birthday? No. No? Oh, I'm sure the party will be lovely. The girls are going to no end of trouble. It's just, you know, being 60. I can't get me head round it. How did I get to be so old? Oh, 60's not old. It's the new 40, isn't that what they say? Now, are these ready to go in the cold store? Yeah. 
Oh, hang on. Is this date right? Oh, I think you forgot to change the stamp this morning. Oh, no, how can I be so careless? Oh, look, I don't think one day early is going to matter all that much. It and... does matter. Mistakes like that can lead to all sorts of problems. Pat, it's okay. It was a silly little mistake that caused the E. coli. Yes, I know. Look, you're really tired and stressed, aren't you? I- I'll be all right. Why don't you take the afternoon off? Susan and I can finish up in here, can't we, Susan? Yeah, yeah, of course we can. Oh, that my phone? Where did I put it? Oh. oh, it's Tom. Oh, Pat. Is he all right? I was really quite worried after he rang on Tuesday. I know you were. He sounded so weary and despondent. But he's cheered up now. Well, he's still finding it exhausting. He says the pace is relentless and every minute of the day is accounted for. There you are, Mum. Help yourself to a biscuit. Thanks. They get woken up at 5.20 in the morning. Just like a dairy farm. And have to be out of their rooms in their PT kit by 5.25 with a full bottle of water, which they then have to drink. How bizarre. It's to guard against dehydration because of the intense physical exercise all day. But then... They have to sing the national anthem. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Before they've even got dressed. It's another world, isn't it? A very odd world. But he's made a friend. That's good. Yes. Another boy the same sort of age from Shropshire, who for some reason is known as Ears. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> and who Dan says is terribly funny. I think that's made all the difference. I'm sure. I still miss him dreadfully. You're bound to. Both you and Alistair. Well, I remember what Phil was like when you all left home, particularly Kenton. Really? When he first joined the Merchant Navy. Well, I thought Dad was glad to see the back of him. For weeks afterwards, Phil was terribly restless. Couldn't sit still for ten minutes at a time. When I asked him what was wrong, he complained the house was far too quiet. Alistair hardly seems to have noticed Dan's gone. I'm sure that's not true. Barely mentions him. Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, it reminds me so much of Mark. Alistair does. No, no, damn. Oh, I see. It's not just the physical resemblance. It's, well, it's this iron determination. (laughs) Do you remember when Mark decided he didn't want to be a lawyer anymore and he was going to be a blacksmith? Oh, yes. It was a completely crazy idea, but no one could talk him out of it. Didn't last long, though, did it? No. So, let's hope Dan's infatuation with the army will be equally short-lived. Tony! Tony! In here! He's all right! He's come back? No, he just sent me a text. He's terribly apologetic. He's had his phone off all week and he didn't realise how worried we'd be. So where is he? He he doesn't say and honestly, I don't care. Just to know he's okay, he's alive. Oh, Pat, come here. (laughs) Oh, Tony. Oh, Oh, I can't tell you what a relief it is. I know, Mm. I know. But but, but when's he coming back, does he say? Uh, He doesn't know doesn't know. Uh, He says, don't know quite when I'll be home, need more time to figure out where I go from here. To figure out where he goes from? He can't do this, Pat. He can't leave us in the lurch like this. We'll manage. We won't, though, will we? Who's going to see to the pigs? Jazza's not going to be available and there's no one else. Um, well, I'm sure we could... um... And what about the organic inspection? It'll be a miracle if all his paperwork's in order. I don't know where to begin with some of his stuff. If we explain to the inspectors what... It doesn't work like that, Pat. You know that. No. Is the idiot boy going to let his business go down the tubes on top of everything else? 